Hello everyone, this is Devin Thorpe for Crowdfund Update at the Crowdcast Network and I'm excited to have with us today a remarkable towering figure in the crowdfunding world. We have with us Heather Lopez of Early Shares. Heather, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Oh, thank you so much. And Devin, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Well, you're kind. It's a joy to have you. You've been really one of the key players in the crowdfunding, at least the securities crowdfunding space for a long time. You're not, this isn't uh, the early days for you at Early Shares. You've really been able to mature a platform in recent months. Tell us about how things are going and what's new at Early Shares. So actually things are going fantastic and as one of the founders of Early Shares, it's amazing to see um, investors and entrepreneurs really starting to come together and making uh, connections that they would have never had otherwise if it hadn't been through our platform and through our guidance. So it's, it's wonderful because Early Shares has been around. We were uh, founded in 2011. Um, and so we're almost going on three years. Uh, we just went live December of last year with some exciting offerings. One of those, a company called Boat Setter, which just passed their minimum amount to close of a million dollars. I'm done through the platform. So it's just, it's an incredible story. We're seeing a tremendous amount of growth over the past few months. So we've technically been transacting for, for four to five months already. And it's, it's, we're making a lot of progress every day. Um, and so it's inspiring. And knowing that this is truly the beginning, <laughs> you know, we like to say it's the, the first inning of the first game of the, um, you know, the opening in the season. Um, it's it's great to think of all the things that are going to come that are going to come down the road for us. Well, I think it's a great analogy. The first inning of the first game of the season. That there's yeah. a lot of, of baseball left to be played. I think that's the game with innings, right? Yeah. So uh, I think this is going to be an exciting time uh, for the industry to grow and evolve. Last week, I had the opportunity to interview and visit with the founder at Boat Setter. A great uh, company for you to have profile on your platform. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you have gone about attracting quality companies to your platform. What's your model? Yeah, so pretty much, I mean, we've received a tremendous amount of applications, um, and we have done a, a great deal of, of looking through the applications and selecting the companies that we feel are providing a unique solution, solving a true problem, have very strong management team. And one of the key things is a little bit different from some of the other platforms is that the companies have to have already had a round of funding in place. So them coming to early shares, we're not their first place of funding. And I think that that's really important knowing um, the how inherently risky these companies can be. So by doing that, we're removing a small piece of that risk. Um, but you know, finding the companies, which we thought was going to be a challenge initially, has not. We've, we're seeing some great, um, some really interesting, unique companies, platforms coming through uh, early shares, and we're very excited to offer them to our community. So tell me a little bit uh, more about your uh, curation model. Or to what extent are you screening companies? To what extent is this an open platform to those who meet your minimum hurdle, say, of having raised money in the past? D do you have a minimum amount of money that they must have raised in the past? Tell me more. I think this is an important part of, of what defines a crowdfunding platform. Yes, absolutely. So it's not a minimum amount in terms of dollars. Um, but it is proportionate in terms of what they're doing. So in other words, if they're raising a few hundred thousand dollars with us and then they have either a friends and family round or a, fa a founders round of 50 or 100, okay, that's proportionate and aligned, okay. Um, if they've raised 50,000 internally and then they're coming to us for 10 million, well, there's a little bit of a disconnect there, right? So everything that we look at is proportionate to, to that number. What other criteria besides the capital raise are you using to screen companies? Right, so we're looking at the management teams um, heavily. And again, I can't emphasize the word team. Um, the companies that are coming onto our platform have robust teams, robust boards of directors, advisory boards, um, and have pretty much already been there and done that from an entrepreneurial perspective. 
And so we're looking for those that the management team to have relevant industry experience within their industry and within and, and doing what they're doing. And typically, when you think about um, you know a tech company startup. You think about a young 20-something year old out of California, and that's really not what we are. You look at a lot of our entrepreneurs and the team on our offerings and their experience, they're middle-aged, if I can say that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, experience, this is their third or fourth company that, that they've um, you know had success with in the past and looking to travel down the same route. Um, so just to take, for example, Boat Setter, he already had a few successes in one of the companies he took IPO. So that to us demonstrates really strong management, great track record. So team is number one. Looking at what their business is, what their business model is, are they truly, do they have something unique and are they truly solving a problem that's clear, clearly identified and that can be useful across a broad um, population, right, or a broad user base? Um, so something else that we look at and also what kind of proprietary information or what kind of intellectual property do they have? Um, is also very important and several of the companies on our site have patents if not one they have multiple patents on, on um, their company so you know all of those different points really set those issuers apart from the general population of applications that we get. So how are you building on the other side of the equation how are you building a network of investors or are you relying principally on your issuers to build that network? No, so yeah, that's I mean that's a great question um, because we're doing both in tandem. So obviously, when you look at the culture and the behavior of when investors make an investment in an early stage company, they're doing so um, pretty much because they have a relationship or they have a comfort level and some sort of security with the founders and with the management team. So um, it's really important to leverage, especially for the initial funding for an offering, it's very important to leverage the issuer's network first and get that 30 to 35 percent that a lot of people reference to get the momentum going and the ball going. Um, and then that's what triggers outsiders to come in. And just to use an example, I, had, I, I speak with issuers and speak with investors and users on the platform um, often because I love to hear feedback. And so one of the investors commented, you know, how is this company doing? And from what I understand, they're doing really well. I'm having some nice conversations coming along and, and disclosing what I can. Um, and he says, you know what, I'm looking at them. I noticed the bars moved, but I'm going to wait until it moves a little bit more to jump in. And so there's somewhat of that psychology where people are waiting for the momentum to really start so they can be the last investor in and feel like, wow, I got in at, at the very end and, and got a great deal. Um, and, and so we're utilizing initially the issuer's network, but we've also got our own large network of accredited investors. And that, that list is constantly growing every day. Now, you, this isn't your first rodeo. Uh, you know, people who are looking at this may look at you and say, "Here's this twenty-something." Uh, uh, oh, you were kind. <laughs> I'm not twenty-something. <laughs> but uh, you, you've been on, you've spent years on Wall Street. Tell us a little bit more about your background and your team, so that people have an understanding of who's behind Early Shares. Yeah, um, uh, we have a truly experienced management team, particularly when you compare to several other players. Um, so just to start with myself, I come from a 16-year corporate back, um, banking and financial services background. Um, I, I started with Merrill Lynch for seven years, and then I had my own financial services company here in Miami uh, for a few years, and then I went on to Wachovia and Wells Fargo Private Bank and, and managed close to half a billion dollars for clients. And then got back into the entrepreneurial spirit with early shares and just taking everything that I've learned from those previous positions and applying it here. And then looking at my partners, um, Joanna Schwartz, our CEO, amazing background. She's already had a couple of successful companies and um, her biggest success is a company called Silver Hill, which she was responsible for running. And so she pretty much built the same platform from A to Z where she was helping young business owners and small business owners get small balance commercial real estate financing 
from two hundred thousand to a million dollars, where banks just weren't interested in that business. And so at the peak of that, she was doing a billion dollars a year in transactions, and that's what we're really hoping on on bringing here and, and getting the business to that level. Um, my other partner, Steve Temes, 25-year hedge fund and financial services history, um, had a few successful companies himself, um, still manages and, and works in, in the hedge fund. Um, and then my uh, two other partners, Renee Caputi, 25-year uh, legal background. She's an international tax specialist, um, very smart, and also involved in wealth management, dealing with entrepreneurs for several years. And then Maurice Lopez, my husband, um, truly entrepreneurial, visionary, very creative, has had several um, uh, companies over the past 18 years. And so when you look at all of the expertise, everybody can complement what what everybody else, what everybody each of our backgrounds are and there's really minimal overlap and so that's what I think makes us truly special and unique. Well, it sounds like you've got a great team. Clearly, not twenty something, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could fake it. Uh, so I congratulate you for that, uh, Heather. Well, it sounds like you've got a great team and uh, you've got a great uh, uh, portfolio of of. Uh, issuers now on the site and uh, a great roster of investors to back them. So sounds like a, a great uh, combination overall. Thank you so much. Again, we're just super excited about everything that we're doing. Um, and you know, I, I don't think I mentioned this before, but our core philosophy is about passionomics. And I'm sure that you've heard that that phrase used by, by us before, but it's truly um, you know, we believe that this is the science of creating value at the intersection of personal passion and investment and connecting passionate issuers and entrepreneurs with equally passionate investors and, and participants and just putting those two together. Well, I, that's uh, a wonderful word. I love it. Passionomics, and it's uh, a great model for entrepreneurship. Let's just take a look at a few of the contact points now for so people know how to reach you. Of course, uh, your website is earlyshares.com. Yes. Uh, you're on Twitter at, uh, at earlyshares and you're also, you personally tweet at, yep. uh, at earlyshares CSO. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Listen, I also want to invite everyone to uh, visit crowdcastnetwork.com where this show will ultimately reside along with our past episodes. We've got dozens now of past episodes of crowdfund update and uh, as we mentioned earlier we uh, did an episode of our new show Reg D TV with boat setter last week and so you can find that on crowdcastnetwork.com as well and you can follow us at crowdcast TV so again Heather uh, thank you very much for joining us today for this great discussion thank you now uh, I really uh, want to thank everyone for taking the time to be with us today. And with that, we'll just say goodbye and let's do some good. Thank you.